So that's me, Carl Chapman, looking like a member of the Taliban. That was actually taken in Iceland. I've been running a, a small wildlife tour company called Wildlife Tours and Education now for about 13 years. Uh, and as well as that, running alongside that, I've also been doing some uh, work for Sea Watch Foundation as a regional coordinator, uh, looking at records off the Norfolk coast that come in for any uh, porpoises, dolphins, seals, any cetaceans. Um, I also do a little bit of work for British Divers Marine Life Rescue as well. Uh, it's mostly seals. We don't have many cetaceans in Norfolk. And besides that, uh, I'm a little bit past wading up to uh, my chest in seawater these days, rescuing things. Uh, I'll leave that to the younger ones. Uh, and uh, mine is mainly a uh, logistics uh, sort of role with these things. So I'm also a county cetacean recorder, recording any cetaceans that either beach themselves or pass the shore uh, for the county. And I also chair the liaison committee for the, North, uh, the Norfolk and Norwich Naturalist Society. This is an organisation that have been around for about 150 years looking after Norfolk wildlife. However, principally, I'm an ornithologist. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be um, sort of taking a walk, if you like, from the shore up to the heath uh, in the, on the North Norfolk coast. So in doing so, uh, you would probably, possibly encounter in the sea a harbour porpoise. Not as common as what they were, but nevertheless, it, they're still possible to, uh, to find off the coast, nice little triangular dorsal fin, about uh, five or six feet long when adult grown. So not too, uh, not too small, not too large, uh, but they're the most populous cetacean that we get offshore. Also, if uh, we, we've got uh, quite a um, large uh, seal colony, or two seal colonies, in fact, uh, in Norfolk, uh, this one is on Blakeney Point, and the seals that you can see there are common seals, easily told from uh, grey seals by their teddy, -like, teddy bear-like nose. Um, but by far the commoner seal is the grey seal. Um, uh, this has got parallel nostrils uh, that, uh, when the nostrils are closed, they, uh, they're vertically parallel. So they pup in winter, whereas the, the common seals pup in summer. Um, the pups in winter are born white. This is a hangover of the Ice Age when they would have been born on, in snowy conditions, uh, but they soon lose that coat as, uh, within a few weeks. If you, uh, if you look out offshore, uh, a common passage bird is the gannet. The nearest breeders that we've got are at Flamborough Head in Yorkshire, but they're not too difficult to find at any time of the year. Uh, fulmers are another bird that, uh, that actually breed here on the cliffs. Very stiff wing birds, almost like I've heard them described as a mini albatross. So these things uh, nest on the cliffs here um, in decreasing numbers now. Another seabird that, uh, that you can uh, see, particularly in winter, well, solely in winter actually, is the red-throated diver. Uh, this is a winter plumage bird. Um, basically, the, uh, they actually breed further north, and it's possible in winter off the Norfolk coast to sit in one position and actually see up to 100 birds offshore. Unlike the less common great northern diver that also visits us in winter, uh, which is again, it's not rare, but it's uh, less scarce. It's about the size of a goose is a great northern diver. We don't always get it uh, good weather here in North Norfolk. Um, the seas uh, around here, around, this is Cromer a few years ago uh, when we had a bit of a storm surge uh, that wrecked the pier and so on. So it's not always, uh, it's not always uh, calm and sunny as it, uh, as it was today. This is, uh, this is quite a rare plant that does grow in Norfolk. It's uh, greater broomrake. It's a parasitic plant. 
There's only a couple of places in the UK where this grows, and I'm sworn to secrecy as to where this actually is, but it's a parasite of gorse bushes that we get here on the coast. So, summer visitors, uh, terns. Uh, we have uh, four different species of tern that regularly visit us and breed here in Norfolk. That's the Arctic tern, the common tern, sandwich tern and little tern. They all breed here. This is a little tern. It's got that diagnostic little white forehead and yellow bill that you can see there. Very susceptible to disturbance. Uh, we have a place called Skolt Head Island. Uh, off north, which is very difficult to reach. Lots of uh, people can't get there, uh, and it does tend to uh, to have better success with breeding birds. Winter visitors, snow bunting, uh, come here in uh, in large flocks sometimes. Uh, unfortunately, decreasing numbers as the temperature gradient increases. These birds move further north to winter. They come down from the Scottish Highlands, from Scandinavia, from Iceland uh, to winter with us on the shoreline and quite often they'll be on the salt marshes. As will this bird, shorelark. Uh, they're a, again Scandinavian breeder uh, but they come down from the north to winter with us. Not as many as they used to do. Again they're probably wintering further north now that temperatures are a little bit milder. Although if you stepped outside my front door today, you probably wouldn't say that. Um, this is a, a drab little wader, insignificant really. It's a knot, a K N O T, if you're not familiar with them, uh, greenish legs. But the, um, the best thing about them uh, is the, the numbers that they arrive in. They can come here in magnificent flocks uh, and on the wash uh, it's possible to sort of uh, almost the sky to darken with these things when they're coming into roost. So <clears throat> if you've not seen the not roost uh, on the wash I would certainly recommend that you go and see it. It's one of the UK wildlife spectacles. I love my waders. Uh, this is a, a little dunlin. Uh, that I laid down uh, in the surf to photograph. Uh, that black belly disappears in winter. So this was, uh, this was a bird that was moving up to nest. It's a heathland nesting bird, heathland nesting wave. Goes into, uh, up onto the moors to nest. Uh, so effectively, uh, we don't often see it in this plumage, only on passage occasionally. So it loses that black belly in winter. You'll be familiar with lapwings, I'm sure. Uh, the old English name for them is green plover, and you can actually see that in the, uh, the picture there, how green it is on the band. Wonderful little birds. This is probably a female. You see that little crest? The, the crest is longer in males than it is in females. We get, uh, we get quite a number of um, birds of prey in, uh, in Norfolk, and... Uh, this peregrine I photographed uh, on Cromer Church. Those of you that have been to Norfolk will perhaps be fam familiar with Cromer. And uh, we've now got sort of four or five different pairs throughout the county that are nesting. Um, breeding on artificial cliffs, if you like, on buildings. This is another bird that started to, uh, to nest uh, in Norfolk. 30 years ago, you would have had to have gone in the UK down to Kent, the very toe of Kent, uh, down to Cot Point to see this. This is a Mediterranean gull, but again, with the temperature gradient moving north, they're actually breeding in Norfolk and, and well up into Yorkshire now, I believe. So uh, they've got this completely white wing and this very, very dark hood and droopy red bill and red legs, very, um, very comical sort of gull. Another visitor from the north this time, a winter visiting gull, a glaucus gull, um, visitor from the north, Iceland, around that area uh, where the uh, substantial population will breed, but they do move south in winter. Norfolk's 
famous for its geese. We have six to seven species uh, on a winter day on the tours that I do on a, on a winter day quite easily. Uh, this is a Brent goose. It's a small, uh, gregarious uh, little, little bird. Uh, and it's got a wonderful gargling call. In fact, uh, it's a favourite of mine, but there are six subspecies of this goose worldwide, and Norfolk gets four of those uh, throughout the winter, regularly throughout the winter. This is a nice little bird. Every, everybody looks to swallows to uh, marvel at migration. Um, but this, uh, this migrant uh, is quite capable of traveling from South Africa up to Greenland. It's a northern wheat ear. A rarer wheat ear uh, is this male desert wheat ear, smart looking bird. And uh, there was one on the foreshore at Cly last October, and that's where I photographed this one. A rare wheat ear. And even rarer, uh, this is a trumpeter finch. Uh, this was on the shingle shoreline at Cly. And um, uh, moving up from sort of, uh, I think the nearest place that we get them would be in North Africa. So uh, whenever you get rare birds like this, you uh, you get people watching them, the twitches, and that's part of the wildlife scene in North Norfolk. As we move that little bit further inland into the reed beds, you, uh, you get summer visiting warblers. This is a reed warbler. Wonderful little, little uh, birds. They, uh, they chunter away in the reed bed uh, and uh, almost have a continuous song. And if any of you have heard or even seen this bird, this is a grasshopper warbler. They have a reeling call, sounds like a fishing reel, constantly clicking and, and uh, uh, they, in fact, they say a grasshopper warbler reels, doesn't sing reels. Also in the, um, in the reed bed, you may be looking enough at the right time of the year to find one of these, this is uh, the caterpillar of the swallowtail butterfly. Not very as obvious as perhaps that picture might, uh, might say. It's got a good defensive tactic. Uh, when it's disturbed or, uh, or poked, uh, two horns, orange horns come out the front, a bit like a, uh, make it look like a snake's tongue. So any predators are, uh, are uh, frightened away. But it isn't as obvious as the adult, which is a beautiful butterfly, Britain's largest. And we've got a sliver of coast here the, where these occur pretty regularly. Also in the reed bed, we get these wonderful bearded tits, got a pinging call. It's a classic reed bed speciality. As is, uh, as is this, this is a Chinese water deer. Chinese water deer, we've got, uh, I took some Chinese students out a few years ago and they'd come over here to study Chinese water deer, believe it or not. We've got more than they have in China now. So it's an imported species, but uh, Britain's got an important population of them. Another uh, classic species of the reed bed is the bittern. Some of you will have uh, no doubt seen these before. They were once quite common, not as common as they were. The downfall of this species is that it was good eating. So in the 1800s, uh, numbers plummeted. And you can see, but looking at the size of those drumsticks on there, that uh, no doubt you could get a really good meal out of it. This is a, a wonderful little dragonfly. It's uh, the Norfolk Hawker. People want to uh, want to call it the green-eyed hawker now, uh, but not on my watch. It's the Norfolk hawker. It's a county speciality, and its uh, its Latin name, I hear Sosceles, comes from that small yellow triangle there on the thorax. Wonderful. This. Uh, this is a, a new damsel tart fly to Norfolk, so willow emerald. You can see that little yellow spur on the thorax is uh, diagnostic if you uh, 
you see these things. They don't, like dragonflies, they don't splay their wings at 90 degrees to their body. And unlike a, a true damselfly, they don't uh, put, their, uh, put their wings down along the body uh, when at rest. They're, uh, they're a special group of um, damselflies uh, called spread wings, and they just open the wings slightly, as you can see this uh, individual doing it. Whenever you get uh, damselflies and dragonflies, you get these birds. Uh, this is a hobby. Um, it's agile, small bird of prey that can fly down uh, dragonflies. And uh, in fact, you can you can see them as they catch the dragonfly in their talons, um, and then in flight they'll raise the talon to the bill, nip off the wings, which you can see flash and drop to the ground below, and then they'll eat the uh, eat the dragonfly while it's flying around. Another um, raptor that we've got here in Norfolk in good numbers is a marsh harriers, a classic bird of Norfolk really. As is the barn owl, uh, not uncommon here. We get good numbers, good numbers of barn owls. And uh, another um, animal that we, uh, is now on every water course in Norfolk is the otter. Uh, so everywhere you look, I'm, uh, I'm seeing otters at the moment. This one's uh, just, uh, got. I think that's a roach that it's got there. Uh, and this one had picked out a pike. You can see that it was almost as long as the otter, this fish. So uh, they're uh, not the fisherman's friend, unfortunately, but, uh, but lovely to see. We've got about uh, 100 or so cranes now in Norfolk. In fact, there were two flying over here this morning that I uh, saw from the lounge window. All the ones here originated from six uh, that turned up in the 1970s and uh, numbers have uh, gained some momentum. Uh, they, uh, they've started to, uh, they started to breed and numbers tripped up and they uh, sort of settled there as well as in East Norfolk, in West Norfolk. And now they're also in Lincolnshire, Yorkshire and Scotland. But we've got about a hundred in, uh, in Norfolk. If you ever get time to go into Clyde Church and look at one of the windows um, at the feet of St. Francis of Assisi, which you can see his, his feet in the top left there, uh, there's this little bird with the blue and red chest. This is a blue throat. In the 1800s, when this window was put in, they were quite common on migration. Not so now, but they're quite common on migration back then. Uh, as they were moving north up to Scandinavia to breed from the continent. They um, are quite rare now, but we still do get them. Beautiful little birds still do occur. This is an even rarer bird. It was uh, turned up from America in uh, Inkly, as a matter of fact. And uh, it's called a white crowned sparrow. It's an American bird. It's not too rare in America, but here, I think there have been maybe half a dozen records in the UK. So this one uh, occurred one year in Cly, and the amount of money that uh, bird watchers raised uh, from people coming to see it uh, was actually commemorated by uh, a small window in Cly Church. So um, in the 1990s, I can remember um, running to see uh, to see this bird. This is a little egret, quite common now, quite commonly breeding. Um, as uh, again, as that temperature gradient moves further north, uh, it brings with it from Europe several other birds. Uh, one of which is the spoonbill, which are again breeding here after an absence of about 200 years or so. Great white egret are not too difficult to find now, distinguished by the yellow bill and the black legs, unlike the little egret with the yellow feet and the black bill. And now we've started to get cattle egret as well, that jowly faced egret with the yellow bill, um, which so often you can find 
around cattle. These are park cattle, by the way, another Norfolk speciality. So more traditional birds uh, found in open water would be kingfisher. Uh, this is a, a male kingfisher. Uh, the female would show quite an amount of red on the base of the bill. She wears the lipstick. So uh, you can always tell males from females. And here we've got the uh, grey crested grebe. This, uh, this bird uh, was responsible for founding the RSPB. A group of ladies got together to protect this bird from uh, the uh, attacks by milliners uh, who used to take those uh, feathers around the neck for making hats. Uh, these two are in the middle of this story. Not uncommon in life. Uh, nor are water voles either. Again, around the, uh, the salt marshes, uh, it's quite easy to, uh, to find a, a water vole, and they're not always in the water. This one had climbed up into a bramble uh, to give me the opportunity to photograph it. And uh, an increasingly common visitor from the north uh, would be this bird, a yellow-browed warbler. Quite a distinctive little song. And uh, in autumn, these are uh, coming down from Scandinavia. Uh, they would normally travel the other way across the top of the continent, down, in, down into China to winter. Um, but one or two will come down this way, um, as will Pallas's warblers. These are very similar birds, but this one has a little yellow rump that it's showing you just between the, the two wings. There. Another small bird of, uh, of the, uh, the sort of hinterland to the coast here that we've got breeding on the ridge that runs east, west in Norfolk is the firecrest. This is uh, Britain's smallest bird. Uh, very, very beautiful. Scandinavian bird that comes down from the north Waxwings, common winter visitor, some years. Sometimes we don't get, uh, we don't get hardly any birds at all. Uh, but when the berry crop fails in Scandinavia, then these birds come down from the north and they can arrive in big numbers, flocks of many hundreds. Not as obvious as waxwings are these little things. These are creeping ladies' tresses, one of our smallest orchids. Uh, no bigger than your little finger and uh, quite beautiful. Um, it's not as rare in the county as this, which is autumn ladies' tresses, a beautiful little orchid. Beautiful. And you can see how it gets its name with that twisty, those twisting flowers in the stem. So the logo of my company uh, includes an alpine swift. As I was setting up uh, wildlife tours medication, one nearly took my head off as I was hanging out the washing. And uh, it roosted in Cromer Church. You can just see it on the right hand side there, just level with um, the base of those big windows. It roosted in uh, Cromer Church. And uh, the following morning when it dropped out, I was able to get this photograph of it. Um, they arrive each year in small numbers, usually in March or April, about now. Um, and as we travel further inland, one bird that no longer visits us in North Norfolk, uh, well, it does visit us but doesn't stay and breed, is the nightingale. It occurs and breeds in South Norfolk, but not in North Norfolk anymore. However, we still get uh, things like red wings in winter, uh, this was uh, in one of the uh, shoreside bushes. They're still easy to find even now as they're making their way back north to Scandinavia. Crossbills are a little bit harder to find. They're a speciality bird that, uh, with those crossbills, feed on pine cones. Uh, they, it enables them to twist the seeds out from between the leaves of the pine cone. Hairs are even easier to find here good numbers of hares in Norfolk. And outside the parks, we get a good number of fallow deer. Um, but outside the park, they're quite rare. Don't get many. Uh, and red deer too. We have several flocks, uh, several herds rather in Norfolk. Um, 
but again, inside the parks that we have, they're a lot easier to find. On the farmland, as we move away from the coast slightly, grey partridge are quite common. One of two species of partridge, of course, that the UK has. But uh, grey partridge are in good numbers here in Norfolk. So were turtle doves. In fact, numbers migrating uh, were said to turn the skies dark. Uh, I think I saw three last year. Um, that was all. It's now a treat to see a, a single bird. Um, shooting, clearing the scum uh, in the winter quarters in North Africa, uh, and pesticides and insecticides used here uh, are causing their demise in big numbers. Great grey shrikes, rare winter visitor. This one dropped into my garden just a few hundred yards from the coast for breakfast one morning. Again, this is a winter visitor. Once rare in the UK, red kites are now back in good numbers. Um, in the whole of the UK, we were down to one single female. Now, 70 to 80 birds roost together in a winter roost in Norfolk. So not at all threatened. Um, adders up on the heaths, our only venomous snake, will even be out in February some years. I've seen one or two this year already. And this is one of the uh, beautiful butterflies that we've got that uh, sits among the heather on the heath. This is a silver studded blue butterfly. And one of the uh, birds of the heath is the Dartford warbler, the wonderful Dartford warbler. Uh, in Norfolk, we've just got a small colony and they're probably the most northerly breeding birds in Europe, but wonderful to see. Very scratchy call, but quite beautiful. And also, we've got these birds uh, in good numbers too. These are night jars, and if you stay into the evening, you'll hear these birds cheering. They've got the old English name of goat sucker. I'm not sure exactly where that came from. But what I've tried to do here in the 30 minutes that's been available to me, to you, is give you a taster uh, to, it's a forerunner, if you like, to uh, a Plover Rover's three hour walk at Cly on Saturday the, Saturday the 16th of October, when hopefully I'll be able to show you some of the wildlife I've illustrated today for you.